Hi everybody, this is Food by Faith Garden to Table and welcome to my backyard. So today we are outside. There are, excuse the dog barking, but today I decided to take a little journey around to some of our big box stores and to my local nursery and pick up a few things because what I wanted was I have an area right behind me by my water barrels that is kind of part sun, part shade. And I wanted to make an edible landscape there. So just right along this area right here, I wanted an edible landscape. So I went out. Of course, I have stuff in my aero garden started. I have stuff in my regular garden. I have plenty of seeds, but um there was some other things that i wanted that i don't have seeds for or i just wanted to support my local nursery so if you were on live with us last sunday it was me and broke farmer and he was talking about mullen and i went on etsy i got two beautiful mullen plants they were about three dollars a piece i got them from pj's nursery and farm on etsy as well as i take a gardening class a uh, herbaceous class and professor bryant gave me some so now i have um, three different mullen plants but i'm going to plant those mullen i went to my local nursery and i got some sweet banana peppers again guys we have to well we don't have to i choose to support my local nursery they're really good guys they're really good people anytime i purchase anything from them um they're always so helpful so i always like to even though again i have plenty of seeds i always like to support them but i also got these today and this is purple sage excuse me purple basil so i have two of them and we know that basil can get big so what i want to do smells so good too what i want to do is i'm going to put the plants that are going to get big on each end so on this end of the rain barrel and on that end of the porch i'm going to put those two basil plants in between those plants is where I'm going to put you guys can read this I have never even heard of banana mint but this smells just like bananas and mint I'm going to plant the banana mint and I'm going to plant the chocolate mint and it's going to be in the area that I don't care if it takes over and ar around the banana mint and the chocolate mint I'm going to plant lemon thyme lemon thyme smells absolutely amazing and it does help with mosquitoes so I have a bunch of that I think I bought about five of these from my local nursery and I'm going to plant those along here, giving each one a little bit of space so that it can creep and crawl out around the mint. And then I'm going to put a border so that everything stays out of my grass. And then I thought this was just a really cute tomato plant to place in my green stock. It is called the Tidy Treats Hybrid Cherry Tomato. It's a compact indeterminate tomato but let me i didn't want this video to be long but let me bring you to the area so of course things are growing very well in my green stock this was a volunteer tomato out of my garden this was another volunteer tomato from my garden down here were seeds that I planted. This is the Jack B. Little Pumpkin. And these are pink eye peas down here at the bottom. 
let's see we got about three uh yeah four of those jack b little that have germinated and then some of the peas that have germinated we have different herbs that i've placed in here and then if you remember on the top here is where i'm going to place the herbs that i have in my arrow garden so i actually have allowed my arrow garden to stay out here for the past couple of nights and what i'm doing is hardening off these flowers and they are going to go in the arrow garden i mean excuse me they're going to go into the green stalk if you can see i completely finished the fence but this is the area excuse the dogs this is the area right here that i wanted to create an edible landscape so grass doesn't grow very well there so i just figured i would create a border from about right here all the way to the end and that's where i'm going to plant some hostas so it'll be the basil the hostas then there'll be the thyme and the mint basil hostas and I want to do it like that. And we've learned from Nikki, the ocd -ish chick, that hostas are edible. They're absolutely gorgeous, so I probably won't be eating mine, but they are edible. As you can see, I did get this area cleaned off. I just have to pull up the landscape fabric before I put down my newest project there. Over there where I had my garlic in the 100-gallon grow bag, I pulled all that up. It is in my garage and it's drying out so what i have in there now is a loofah a dishcloth loofah as well as um another pumpkin i believe and i put it back there because of course i'm going to put a trellis up so that it can trellis as you can see my zucchino rampicante is just doing beautifully Stacy from Hands in the Dirt, I saw that you have some beautiful off, 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 nasty bugs. I saw that you have um, some beautiful North Georgia candy roaster squash going. This is my vine here. I have one over there. I have quite a few that have pollinated and some that will probably drop off but i have quite a few that have pollinated and some that didn't get fully pollinated but i'm letting it grow along the top portion of the fence as well as the bottom portion of the fence if you can see it growing all the way down there and then that trellis that you guys saw me build the other day that is what I wanted to put up there um, just to kind of get it off of the ground because when I'm walking through here, I want to see where I'm stepping and what I'm stepping on. And because that plant is so vigorous, you won't know. Guys, if you've ever watched the New Orleans Gardener, Miss Linda, she grows the Texas Super Sweets. So mine aren't looking the best that I have in this little bed here, but there are actually some nice bulbs underneath this dirt. I cooked one the other day with that Zucchino Rampicante. Y'all, it was so good. If you ever get a chance to either grow from seed, purchase some from Dixondale Farms, whatever, make sure you get, let me get the exact name. If you purchase from Dixondale Farms like I did, it is the Texas Super Sweet. Oh my goodness. And I also saw that my local... Um, my local nursery they had some and I'm thinking about going back through and getting some from them last year I started onions from seed 
and that's them right there the ones with the really big bulbs and they are good as well they are doing very well i it was really easy to start them from seed but at this point right now um if you don't have time to start them from seed again you can get them from your local nursery or from dixondale farms um i think that's all i wanted to show you guys i really just wanted to show you what come on what i had growing on what i had picked up um y'all look at these tomatoes oh my gosh look 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 can y'all see that can you see hold on let me adjust you look at the beauty oh man they are coming along so awesome. That is going to make for some good salsa and some good sauce. Ooh, these flies are driving me crazy. My carrots are doing very, very well. I got some volunteer potatoes in my bed with my peppers. Get out of there. It's been a pretty warm day. So I am going to turn on my soaker hose, but check this out, guys. I don't want to break it, but I want to bring you in so that you can see. Take a look at that. Can you see it? That is one Zucchino Rampicante. Can you see? Look how long it is. That is as long as a kakuzi gourd. Y'all, that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. My chocolate sunflower is pittering out. But what I did was I did plant another sunflower on the end here. So I have one here. Then I should have another one over here. somewhere just so many things being taken over if you want shade you can always stand underneath a leaf of the north georgia candy roaster squash <laughs> but guys i got two of the three sisters gardening methods going on here if you have never heard of the three sisters gardening method so the three sisters gardening method is where you are growing your pumpkin your corn and your beans so right now i'm growing the squash portion for the pumpkin i'm growing some corn here if you can see it but i don't have any beans over here um the chamomile is kind of doing the takeover so I mean the calendula, not the chamomile. So I won't have any space here to actually be able. Y'all, I want to pull this up and make sure it trellises across and not on to. There we go. Uh-oh. That was bad. But I want it to come across here. I don't want it to attach itself to the tomatoes. because that'll be bad. So let's get it hooked up here. So I'm kind of getting it comfortable up here. But I don't want it to be cut by the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through. As a matter of fact, give me just one second. I'm going to use a little tape here.
Here we go. Just like that, it's in there. See, I didn't want it to be cut by the wire. Well, guys, that's it for right now. I just wanted to bring you guys along for that quick update. Oh, I'm going to pull these. Oh, they're so soft. I'm going to pull the whole thing. I had to clip the whole thing off because they are ready to be harvested. And if I leave them out here, they'll be eaten by the bugs. And we work too hard for that. So guys, that is it for now. As I always tell you, remember to get up, get out and grow something and have faith in our food. I'll see you the next time.